Hey everyone, this is Jace with Elevate Strategies here to help you conquer the NPTE. Today we are going to go over lab values, everybody's favorite subject, and we are going to cover the four most important lab values for the test, what they actually are, like what they signify, the normal ranges, and then stay tuned for another video in which we will cover the cutoff ranges where if it goes below this range, you can't exercise your patient. So our four lab values is gonna be hematocrit, hemoglobin, white blood cell count, and platelets. First, let's just define what the heck these things are because that's actually gonna help you when you're trying to eliminate or pick an answer on the test. So all these values have something to do with our blood. And that makes sense because if we lack blood, then we have tissue death. So that is why we focus on these and that's why these lab values are actually important. The values we discussed today will come from Goodman and Snyder's book, Differential Diagnosis. If you're looking for a resource, this was the fifth edition. There are other sources out there and some of them have slightly varying numbers. Don't stress too much though, because we're gonna learn our range anyways, and that is gonna be good enough for the test. All right, starting with hematocrit, this is simply the red blood cells. So you know when you get your blood drawn right and they take that vial and then they spin it and centrifuge it down and then you end up with something like this that you have some red and some yellow in there. Well, the red part is your hematocrit and it's just a percentage of red blood cells in your blood. So remember that the zoomed in version of blood has lots of things. We've got proteins, we've got red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, a lot of the stuff we're talking about today. So technically, um, there's a set of values for females and another set of values for males. However, for the NPTE, we're just gonna learn a very broad range that covers both males and females. Females will tend to be on the lower end of this and males tend to be on the higher end. So our range is gonna be 35 to 55% for hematocrit. And that will work on the NPTE because when you're trying to eliminate answers, that's gonna fall within the area that you need it to be. Okay, the next value that we wanna go over is hemoglobin. And this is a molecule that we have in our blood that will link four oxygen molecules at one time. It's essentially the oxygen carrying capacity that our blood has. And it is, it lives within the actual red blood cells. So hematocrit and hemoglobin are really closely linked together. And if one is off, the other one might be off. Um, so they're very closely linked. But there's also a distinction, once again, between males and females. Females are gonna be on the lower end, but we are going to know a range once again. So that's gonna be 12 to 18 grams per deciliter. And in this case, you can see we have specific units. So sometimes that will actually help you on the test because if you're thinking hematocrit, then it needs to be a percentage answer. But if you're thinking hemoglobin, well, then you're looking for units. So that could be one way that you can get to an answer on the test. All right, so going back to our little vial of blood that we centrifuged down where we had the red and the yellow, you can't ignore the yellow part either because that's gonna be everything else that's not red blood cells. And that's gonna include stuff like our white blood cells and our platelets. So we're gonna talk about white blood cell count first. And you've probably heard of white blood cells to some degree, right? And if you think about what they do, hopefully you're thinking that they fight infection. Now there's a bunch of kinds of white blood cells. You don't actually need to know those names, at least for the NPTE, just know what white blood cells are. Again, we're going to have a range and our normal range is technically 4,500 to 11,000, but let's just make it easy. We're just gonna say 5,000 to 10,000 is gonna be normal range, okay? And this begs a question, why is there such a big range, right? It's either, 5,000 or double that, which is 10,000. Well, this is why it's helpful to know what white blood cells do, because if they fight infection and there's not a current infection that your body is fighting, they're probably on the lower end of that 5,000. Whereas if you have an infection your body is fighting, and we know that you don't always have symptoms if your body's fighting an infection, it could be on the higher end. So that makes sense, at least why there is such a big range. Okay, finally, we need to know about platelets. So the same idea, what the heck are platelets? Well, I like to think about uh, our blood and like all of the elements of the blood at one time because it helps me picture it. And as we can see here, platelets are really small compared to the rest of the things like white blood cells, red blood cells, um, things like that. So 
that helps us a little bit because our normal range is going to be 150,000 to 450,000 cells. Again, why so many? Well, they're really small and they're clotting factors. So this is why we have a big range. Again, if you don't have something that requires a big clot to be formed, you're probably gonna have less platelets than if you have cut yourself and you need some blood to be clotted. All right, finally, here is just a summary table. It lists all the lab values we went over today, the normal range for those values, and just a quick description of what those are. Hopefully that will help when you're trying to do your studying. And next week, we're gonna continue with these values and we will add a column to have a cutoff score. And if the lab values are below this range, then you're, it's really not safe to exercise your patient. So that's what we will do next week. Okay, thanks for joining me today. Hopefully that was a little bit helpful and maybe simplified the lab values that seem kind of scary on the test. Don't forget to check out the information in the box below. There's gonna be a link to our website. There's some free practice test as well that you can try. And remember this channel's for you. So if there's something that's either helpful or that's not helpful or that you would like to see us go over, just comment below and we will try to get to those. All right, see you next time. Happy studying.